Hello, everybody. This is Esther L. with Urban Asset Protection. I really want to thank you for joining us this evening. We have a special guest. We have um, our guest here in Nicholas, Brooklyn. His name is Joel Benjamin. He is an esteemed and established uh, <laughs> business owner. He has several businesses under his belt. He is also a uh, his passion of mine, which is we share, which is similar, is he's a video blogger. Um, he's done such interviews with individuals like Blue Pill, Red Pill, and I saw the interview; it was awesome. And then I just like to give a special shout out to Kadira Bay, Dr. Arlene Bay's wife, for allowing me to. Um, make the connection to interview you tonight. And I just really want to show my appreciation for you um, allowing me to do it on such short notice. So Joel, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. <laughs> how are you? Peace to the room, peace to the people, peace to all your viewers. You know, I was very excited because I've seen some of your interviewing skills already. So you know, let's get this started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. So um, we've been talking throughout the day, and I think what I was most impressed with is I was able to look at your Facebook, and then Kadir really, she gave you some big ups. She stated that um, you've been on Dr. Aline Bay's show. You've talked about a lot of healing things and a lot of crystals and energies and your websites and your skills. But I was really curious, you know you wanted to be an, a business owner. Sorry, had to unmute the mic. <laughs> uh, okay. That's a very good question. And as you ask me that, anybody that ever asks me that, always the number five come up. Like around the age of five. I was always looking to sell something, you know. <laughs> my moms used to look at that, and my pops used to look at that quality in me, and they like they always, you know, give me that side eye look. I remember this growing up, and they're like, "Yo, why are you always trying to sell something? Everything, like everything about you, is money." And I'm like, "No, it's not, because I share a lot in my life as a child to an adult, and you know." always sharing, but let's be real, some things ain't to be shared, they gotta be bought. And you know, regardless of what, sometimes it's just gotta be earned, you know? So that that's around that age, around five. And I remember when I was in um, junior high school, I had a funny, cause in the urban communities, you know, you don't get to see or hear of any type of business class, especially not in junior high school. So I believe the one um, junior high school I was in was Somers, Somers Junior High School. And I don't remember the business teacher name, but I remember this white guy was my business teacher and he always used to look at me and he was like, man, he would hear me speak and just my ideas on business, on how to go about it to um, produce a proper revenue stream. And he was like, wow, like this dude, he looked to take me pretty much under his wing from a very young age. Everybody would be disruptive in the business class. I would sit there <laughs> with my hand folded like this and just paying attention. Um, the way how I go about business is not really the whole traditional route you know, with using the whole terminologies and all this, you know, I just say, yo, this look like it's a good idea. This look like it could work. We're doing it this way. And that's from ever since a child. That's how I did it. And I don't plan on stopping it because it works for me. So you, you mentioned some interesting things. One of the things that you mentioned that I'm curious about is you said that um, you don't go about it. So what what is one of your businesses? Because I, I know we talked about you're in business, but one of your businesses, what do you do? All right, that's where me and my wife, we have Nicholas Brooklyn. 
We do le uh, lectures, different events there. People rent out the space. We do wholesale shipping. Uh, a lot of people feel like they can't order products <laughs> over the phone or online, which they can. Um, we just do so much. Our next thing we have is the um, jewelry. You know, that business, that aspect. Uh, if you notice, it's, it's like I, be, I feel somewhat funny when I am talking about the different businesses that I do because I'm so secretive. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to be honest about that. So I believe that's what make me very humble because, like, I'll be driving a fancy car. And I want nobody to know what I drive. <laughs> you know, like, that would be more my wife was like, yo, let's get this. Let's get this type of truck. And I'm like, could have settled for a damn Nissan <laughs> minivan, you know. But she was like, yeah, let's get that. And I was like, okay, we get that. So with the biz, with, with me and my wife, how we do business and the business I had before I met her and the business she had before she met me, we basically combined and we made a devastating team when it came to business. That's that's the type of business that we do so well. It's not to brag, it's just the honest truth. One of the major things that play part in the businesses that I do and that I deal with is the aspect of spirituality. Uh, a lot of people, they tend to sleep on the spiritual aspect of business. What do I mean by that? Like if people go on my Instagram, I show them me in the Nicholas Brooklyn shop. There's also one in Harlem, by the way. Um, yeah, one on 125th and 5th in Harlem. All right, so I guess you call that one Nicholas Harlem. One, two, fifth and St. Nick's. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so basically, I was showing on my Instagram. If anybody want to check it out, they could go to uh, just type in in the search, Joel Benjamin 528. You combine the word together, like pretty much how it's showing up right here so people could see. And I'm, sh I'm in the shop. And I'm smoking the shop out. What do I mean by smoking the shop out or cleansing the shop or charging the shop? You have your charcoals, your charcoal burner or chalice. You have the um, rock incense, your three kings, your patchouli, your Jerusalem, your money, rock incense. Okay. <laughs> you have all these things. So I, I showed me go around the store, do it. Then I went to my vehicle and do it as well because people don't tend to smoke out their personal space. They might do it for the business, but they might not do it for the home. Or they might do it for their home and business, but don't think about doing it for their vehicle. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if you're driving a motorcycle, whatever type of um, transportation you're using that is your own, you have to smoke it out. Because the next reason why I'm very like secretive on certain business businesses that I have and you know collaboration and different business ventures with other people is that jealousy, that spiritual aspect of jealousy. You'll have people hating on you and when they send in those brain waves, I did a lecture on scalar weaponry and how one of the best major weapon is the brain like I got a shirt um I don't know how much people watch Game of Thrones I love that show <laughs> All right. All right. The blonde <laughs> she killed me when she came out she was naked and the whole spot was on fire and yes. She all them Arabic dudes up or yeah. whatever, Middle sure. Eastern dudes. And she came, I was like, that's the baddest white chick I didn't see in a long time. <laughs> so you know exactly the show I'm talking about. One of my favorite characters on there is the um the dwarf, as they oh, call Oh, he him. go hard because you know people really underestimate him, but he has yeah. 
that power of not only persuasion but critical thinking because he gets he got himself out of getting killed like five times but i'll let you go <laughs> and, he, and the the best part about that is is because he know how to do good business if you really pay attention to the show he's always making some business arrangement and alliance and he like to be kept more behind the scene as well so i have a shirt with him on it and it says my mind is my weapon a lot of people sleep on that aspect in business they think about the money the money the money the money the money and the whole aspect of business see I, a lot of times i come from a more spiritual side when it comes to business that's why i'm different from most people Business, you don't only supposed to think as business as gaining monetary value. You're supposed to also think as of business as alliances, gaining alliance or making yourself look good. Now, that last part I said, people might say, well, that's vain. What do you mean making yourself look good? When you do certain things in business like charity, it's a reason why the football players, basketball players, golfers, actresses, actors, they do this. It's because they need to look good in the public eyes. Not just the public eyes, the people who also have businesses. Now, perfect example, you got Tiger Woods. He was getting all them endorsement deals. He was the squeaky clean, mixed black dude, quote unquote, or combination or whatever the hell he called himself, right? <laughs> there was getting all them deals. He was getting all them deals. As soon as his wife took that damn, you know, putter, tying tire iron, whatever type of golf club she used through his car. And then it started coming out like, yo, he only like white women. Mm -hmm. He like the Beckys. You understand what I'm saying? That's all he like. And not just all he like, but he got a wife and he's sleeping with all these women. Some of them he's paying. That's a bad image. Now, in all actuality, people say, well, what the hell? That's the man's personal business. But, but you can't do that if you're in a public eye. Thank you. You know how much people I want to curse out? You know how much people spots I want to blow up because they think they're all that? But I, I don't even like saying the word I can't. I'm not able to because if I am able to do that, there will be repercussions. I will look at, I will be looked at as the person that is always the antagonist. I'm a troublemaker. He's difficult to work with. You don't want those type of titles. And if you do have that type of title, if you're lucky enough to have somebody work with you, you are supposed to prove that title that was put on you wrong. So when come to business, it's very important to be secret about certain businesses you have. And then a the next thing too, some of the businesses that I do have and deal with honestly speaking a lot of times you have to choose what you're doing as a ethnic group okay now you could be a person and if anybody think that yo this is not true okay don't listen to me go do whatever you do and you'll see what i'm talking about let me see how far you go in a whole aspect of business all right, let's say you're selling, I want to give a good, real, real, real good example of something that I witnessed. Let's say you're selling bed sheets, right? Top of the line, high class, A1 quality bed sheets to rich folks. All right, now you have a decision. If you know your clientele and how they move and you know your clientele 
are mainly Jewish. Hear me out. And that clientele only like to buy from their own kind. But you know you're making money from them. They don't know how you look. But you know if they know how you look, they will try to go buy from their own kind. Would it be wise now to put your face and change up your label and put your face? Right. Would Really? Oh. And would it would it be wise to do that? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> and I'll let you expand on that. Okay. A next example. Let's say um, <laughs> I'm gonna go to a, a sh um, Empire, a show. Um, I know it have people that watch Empire. They be trying to front and be like, "I don't watch that coon show." Yeah, you do. I love Cookie. I'm not even. I can't even front Cookie. You know, for what we have right now, okay, she is a very good role model of a black woman, and that is what the white people are putting out. So, out of all the shows with the bad winches, um, and uh, what is that? All those other shows. I, I choose Cookie if they're giving me a choice. I'm sorry. And I understand why. <laughs> so with that show, you have the um, Cookie's son who is gay, yeah. right? And, and that's bad. What is his name? You watch the show. Right? I don't know the character. Jamal. I just Jamal. know Cookie. Jamal. And Got it. Okay. Jamal. And they big him up to being like the main character now when you really watch He's, and he's smart, right? He's supposed to be the smart one out of everybody. Exactly. So it had an episode where he slept with Alicia Keys. Now, his father don't approve of him being gay. And the father had to make a, a deal, an alliance deal with a gay white man. All yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And if you remember... The father took great pride that Jamal, which seems like he's bisexual, the one who slept with Alisa Key's character, he went and bragged to the white dude to throw it up in his face to hit him a blow. Yeah, this is the face that you're using to push your gay movement. Guess what? He's sleeping with her. You understand what I'm saying? That... Yeah. That gay, I don't know if you saw that episode. But I that, did, and then he got, yeah. and then he walked out, like, I think the next episode, and he got bombed, like, all the dancers came out, and... Right, that gay dude, that gay dude had a fit, that gay white guy had a fit, like, wait a minute, this is the guy who I want to push, because he talked to Jamal, and he was like, yo, you're breaking barriers for us. <laughs> for now us. it's us, it's us. <laughs> exactly. So you got to pay attention. Remember, this is all dealing with business. Mm. So he's like, you're breaking barriers for us. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. He find out. Then once he found out after the pops blew up Jamal's spot that he slept with Alicia Keys' character, he brought Jamal into the room and he spoke with him and he's like, yo, I don't think we could use you <laughs> as the yeah, face he can. To, he got to push us. No, because his whole thing was if the scandal come out that you slept with that woman, it's going to be... And you're supposed to be gay. Then where do we lie? So their thing is you are not supposed to push man dealing with women. You're supposed to be gay. You're supposed to be pushing man on man. And that was just a business. That was just business. And of course, Hakeem, he still ended up getting around it. And was like, yo, nobody's going to find out. Because remember, that's all dealing with business. So your perception on business have to change. And you have to force yourself to change so people could perceive you in a better light. Well, that's interesting too. And I wanted to go back. I was looking at my notes real quick. I wanted to go back to what you said right here. When you were talking about just business and spirituality, I picked up on some points and 
what are your thoughts on burning bridges? Because that's um, did you say burning that or burning? takes a lot of burning individuals. Sometimes I feel individuals get so heated and excited about certain topics that touch them that they fail to realize that there's a bigger connection. There's something bigger outside of themselves. And usually, you know, your personality that you have in your personal life spills over into your business life. And I've noticed that people, and we've talked about this in the past, people easily burn bridges. And then, you know, they may have a blow up with someone that day and then they feel subconsciously or maybe consciously that they will never see that individual. And in two or three weeks down the road, we're in the same conference room forced to work together to do a business deal. So do you have any advice for entrepreneurs and business owners about, you know, what they can do to prevent from burning bridges? The best way I could say is to stay humble as possible and don't have too many people in your business. That's one of the major ways to not burn bridges. Now, example, you have a certain view on something. You do not share that view. I don't care how cool you get with the person unless you really end up with that tight niche bond and they open up to you a little bit and you feel them out. You get what I'm saying? Once you start feeling them out, then you could say, well, you know, I already feel this way. A lot yeah. of times an easy strategy, a way to do that, take them out to drink. <laughs> I don't even drink. Now, if the person don't drink, <laughs> you have to really figure out a way how to gauge them and i don't drink alcohol but most people do especially most people that deal with business because for some reason a lot of times they're stressed and that reason is because they got to run a business <laughs> it's stressful people think it's so easy it's really not i it have people that left business businesses that they had was that was successful to go do they sell it, sell the company, right? Get whatever money they could get from it, and then they go back working a job, or they they work on that same company that they started that they just sold to somebody. Okay, so yeah. now they say alcohol is called liquid liquid courage. All right, yeah. and next name for it is truth serum. You take them out, they're gonna loosen up. It's a reason why, why you think every time they put it in movies, all these different TV shows, if anybody that really deal business on a high level, they always want you, let's go out and drink. Well, we could talk it over, over drinks. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Use a cabeza, keep your head on. That's a strategy. That's a strategy. Anybody that's good in dealing with business knows that strategy. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could do some business. Ha, ah, Jimmy. Yeah, come on, Jimmy. Let's go have a few. Throw them bears back. Certain deals get signed like that right there. Over them drinking and chilling. And they open up and they feel they have a bond with you. And then you could know where you stand with the person. So it's a reason why they use that strategy. Um, that strategy is not just there for having fun. It's there to be used as a proper business tactic. With, when you having that, depending on how the person is, like I said, it's also called true serum. If anybody never heard that word for alcohol, learn it. It's called truth serum. A lot of times they'll tell you, yo, straight up, I don't like you, but you're a big money maker and <laughs> I need you on my team. And then they start divulging stuff about their company because my company is going down in this part of sales, blah, 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 blah. Now you got a very important piece of information. You know what? Now I'm going to charge higher. Not because you don't like me, but because now I know you need me. Of your business, you need me. <laughs> you need me. And that's the most beautifulest feeling in the world. <laughs> you understand? When you're doing business with people, one of the main 
one of the main things that you put down is I don't need you. You need me. Right. Or some people go the route like how I go. We need each other. And then you got some people, they go the route. Yo, we really don't have to be working together. We really don't need each other. But it will be lucrative for us too. You hear people say like that. Me, I don't care how small time you are. I don't care how big time you are. I'm going to do business with you. All right? And that's one of the things that people like about me. Because I'm very, how you say, I'm very fluent with what I do. I'm consistent. I don't like to just stay stagnant when it comes to dealing in certain business. Like my wife all the time, she's like, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. When are you going to take a break? I'm like, yeah, I take a break. You know, before when I was really, really hardcore on it, like my mom's will come out or my pops when he was alive or just different people that know me. And they'd be like, yo, you up late. Yo, you don't sleep. <laughs> my favorite line is sleep is for the dead. Right, yeah. I can sleep when I'm dead. You know, that's a common, common thing. I wanted to ask you too, you brought up stress. And when you're stressing as a business owner, I noticed that a lot of business owners um, have a dis they fail to make a distinction between being self-employed, which is owning a job, um, and being a business owner, which means that, well, Robert Kiyosaki, I really like him. He talks about how you can take a business, um, walk away from it for a year, and because you have proper planning, management, policies, and procedures in place, when you come back from that business after a year, it flourished more than when you know when you were actually there, which he states is the hallmark of a true business owner. So are you able to divulge some secrets of how you maintain or like what some of your structures are so you don't have that level of stress of someone who's self-employed? Well, first of all, again, it goes back to what we was talking about with burning bridges. It's very important not to burn those bridges with people who work for you. You know, people feel, oh, because you work you work for me, damn it. And I say, get your ass over there. You get your ass over there and you do it like this. Nah. It might have a time you have to talk like that, but if that's the basis of who you are all the time, you're messing up because this person is supposed to watch your stuff and run stuff for you when you are not around. Yeah. Then they got people don't you could be no matter how nice to them. You you gotta remember it always if you go into business and you think, yo, people be like, yo, think positive, think positive. Yeah, that you know, I ain't gonna cuss. That ish sounds good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you always have somebody trying to take your spot. You might find that you're not even high up there on the level that you want to be. And you might feel yeah, like, hey, I ain't doing that good. I should be doing way better. You got somebody there just watching, hawking, thinking, yo, that person doing too damn good. This is business. You understand? So one of the biggest techniques to lower your stress, stay humble. That's number one. Again, it got time. Now, by, make no mistake about it. I'm not saying stay humble where people take your kindness for weakness. Yeah. When it's, when it's time to turn it on in badass mode, you go badass mode. You understand what I'm saying? There's a time, a place for that type of... um situation so the uh, next thing too you have to make sure is a certain part of business that you like doing that brings a calm to you see most people don't understand like this what we're doing right now this it opens me up and what i mean by opens me up 
it reminds me, hey, practice what you preach. Yeah, yeah. You keep it's a constant reminder to stay humble because the you're here. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The more times you say something, it becomes like a mantra, an affirmation, and that that helps you out with your stress levels, and it works with dealing with like-minded people. And what I mean like-minded people does not mean, oh, well, if this person don't have a business, I can't deal with them. That's not the right attitude to have. You have to be that person where, you know what? Let me shift gears, give you a better example. They say politics makes strange bedfellows, right? You ever heard that saying? Yeah. Do you know why they say that? No. Okay. A lot of people don't know. So I'll share with you. How is it that you could have somebody that's high up on Capitol Hill, right? But they'll be going, taking visits, undercover, dressed up with a sweatsuit and a hoodie, right? <laughs> going into Brownsville projects. What is Edward doing meeting with Pookie and Ray Ray? Buying votes. <laughs> it got to be something. They have some business going on. They have some common interest. You're getting it twisted because this person who you assume is on a higher pedestal and this person down here who's on a lower pedestal, you assume that's what it is. But if you really know, this person helped me get up here. But oh, you are yeah, not judging a book by its cover. There you go. So that's why they say politics makes strange bedfellows. Today, you, you see it all the time. People just don't pay attention. You see politicians, they will be dogging one another out. <laughs> You know, right. fighting for a certain spot the next day they hugged up praising each other you know wow. I, had, I had an attorney I mean he fought tooth and nail for me and then when I heard them during the settlement on the phone like they were they were laughing and joking and I was perplexed I was like don't they hate each other no nah, it's just business but we still cool I was like, okay. <laughs> just give me my money. Yeah. <laughs> so you get you, you get the example where I'm coming from. I do. So politics makes strange bedfellows. If you could remember this, that means don't think you're too big to hang with somebody that you might feel is too small beneath you. Because you never know when you're going to need that person assistance in a certain field that you're not able to complete. The next saying is the people you pass going up, that's just are like the same it. people you meet coming down. So humble yourself. Yeah. And that's just, and to piggyback on what you said, that's just like the situation with the iPhone. Kodak is bankrupt now because the owner of the iPhone came to them years ago and they said we're gonna we're gonna revolutionize this is not an iPhone but they were like we're gonna revolutionize everything and we're gonna put your cameras on our iPhones and, and Kodak was like you're crazy um that's never gonna happen and we're the biggest people on earth I wish I could share my screen with the audience Kodak is bankrupt and I was talking to a woman um, because I was running payroll for, for paychecks. And she's up in, um, I can't, it's somewhere upstate um, where Kodak is. And she was like, oh man, it might, it's a ghost town out there. And I'm like, Thank yeah. You. Now, if that, now that person who came to them with that idea, that vision, they just couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. Why they couldn't see it? Because they let their ego get the best of them. And that too is a form of stress. You got good stress, you got bad stress. All right? People need to learn that. You got EU stress, 
or is stress and then you just have straight stress now when you have a, a perfect example of EU stress is oh man it's raining uh, might make my commute my walk to wherever a little difficult but got my umbrella all right then you have the stress is gosh damn I got this meeting to go to I have no umbrella but I gotta get there and I know if I get there I'm gonna be soaking drenched wet what are the perception of me if I walk into the board meeting soaking drenched wet okay so all that will play a toll so you have to know which one is good which one is bad and just to um, touch on with the Kodak you know that you just the Kodak example that you just gave it is tons of people that do that because they're not humble they're not they're just not humbling themselves when people come to me and they have certain ideas with business I look at it I assess it and I really study it so but that takes time people feel that you are not worthy of having my time they're gonna dismiss you so normally the average person will give you five minutes and you're lucky if you get five minutes by the way they'll give you five minutes boom pitch my idea if you don't catch me in that five minutes <laughs> then I don't even I can't even think about us going further for you to even try to make a deal with me and that's the problem and big mistakes that people do in business and once you could overcome that again I'm gonna say it again politics make strange bedfellows just because that you feel that you're higher than somebody don't adopt that attitude that's one of the biggest first mistakes people do in business a lot of people that fall victim to that is rappers <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> if I'm wrong tell if, if I'm wrong tell me I'm wrong now you're right they get big time and some of the people that they used to have make their beats for them or people that they will collaborate on the regular they don't want to help uplift them too like yo you know what I got this major album coming out you've been rocking with me from day one I could give you at least the hook on the song nah they big time then you ain't seeing them no more so now what happens when they fall as they falling remember what I said the same people that you pass going up is the same people you're gonna see coming down or you might have been on the same level with them guess what now you're coming down now you're past them now who's above who now you're gonna need that same person to reach out for you and give you a handout so you you know you just don't know what tomorrow bring but if people would have a proper spiritual a spiritual aspect about themselves and people would be like well what does that have to do with business listen if you know people that really do business and I'm talking about passing lots of money through their hand and really know them not know of them really know them and you'll see how they do like Russell Simmons they were showing um I, I think it was MTV Cribs and they're showing uh, the different spiritual system that he's in um, who else DMX they starting to show the spiritual system that he's in now which making him get his life in order the spiritual system and I use this example and people be like damn you gotta go to the extreme hell yeah I gotta go to the extreme because this stuff is real even Satan worshipers they have a spiritual system their job their job is to try to do wickedness and cause dysfunction correct right but yet they will still pray to an entity to achieve that some people will say well I'm an atheist and I don't believe in all this and all that okay not a problem sit back and let me see how that work out for you right business wise mm -hmm. and you do business so I'm sure you know what I'm talking about and have people where you know what this is extremely unprofessional but I'm gonna go run and grab my charger <laughs> you could keep talking it is just downstairs 
But I, I didn't want you to be like, where did she go? <laughs> nah, go ahead. Grab your charger. It's not a problem. You keep talking. Yeah. So basically when people see you in certain lights and what you're doing, they're able to open up to you more, especially if it's in a good light. So you have to have a certain spiritual system in what you're doing. Most people just don't get that part. They just don't understand it. And that is what caused a major problem and a major downfall when coming to business, period. They're like It's no other way to put it. It's so much do's and don'ts when it comes to business. I mean, when you're dealing with paperwork, you could have somebody like Urban Asset Protection that could help you with dealing with business and paperwork but the fundamental of business like you have a good customer every week this person coming and buying so much stuff they're at least buying a thousand dollars worth of products every week do you ever say one day hey hold this for free you take that do you ever build up that bond with them yeah oh me yeah no i know you but i'm talking oh, okay. to the listeners yeah, is awesome <laughs> especially people who have business do you ever just being that this person spends so much money with you support you do you ever just say hey you're custom buying um cups from me and you spend a thousand dollars worth here man take at least half a pack of cups that's on me you right and a lot and that goes with like broadening your horizon not only just staying in your local area but i've been uh, overseas seeing how people do business now in certain asiatic and uh cultures you spend so much you i mean i went to china you sit there automatically you come in i thought I personally thought Top Ramen was was like just for ghetto Americans, but it's a staple in China. So when you walk in, you automatically get Top Ramen noodles. You sit down, they showcase everything for you. And then when you leave, you buy a certain amount, they give you things free. Now that concept that you were just mentioning, that there is only for the elite in America. You know what I'm saying? That That's considered special treatment, but it's commonplace in Shenzhen, China, for anyone to come in and do business and get that treatment too. So that goes with classism, you know? Right. And that's why at Nicholas, and, and, and everything I do, period, in dealing with business, I make sure I give something, generosity, whatever you want to call it. I got a way I could break that down spiritually. I wouldn't even do that. Some people like to talk, oh, pay it forward. Some people want to say, oh, the secret. We ain't got to go all there. It's about making a damn person feel good. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like some people would accuse me of being a flirt. But if a lady comes in and she looks nice and she's wearing something nice, I'm going to tell her, you look nice. You smell nice. A guy walks in, he got some nice spiffy shoes on. Man, I like those shoes. Those are some nice shoes. You pay these people a compliment. It ain't like you lying. Sometimes people go for it just to lie. Yeah, understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, they understand business aspect of it. Um, what's wrong with that? You get what I'm saying? One of the things I notice when people come into the shop, and that, that's why I will get one of my biggest pet peeves. I tell the workers there, and we're like a family, but I tell them, I better not hear somebody walk through that damn door and they didn't ask if they need help. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, and that's the stigmatism that, um, 
black business owners or black businesses in general have, you know, just poor customer service skills. Yeah. And, and you know what? It just now went out from that to it's an American thing now <laughs> where people, I'll go up in some white establishments, Asian, um, different ethnic groups and nobody's asking me if I need help. It's proven at least 70% is probably more now because you know people got big egos. At least 70% of consumers when they walk into a place and they're not getting help, at least within the first two, three minutes, somebody actually greeting them or asking them if they need help, they're not buying nothing. Why do you think people who gets it, they'll have a greeter? I'm going to repeat. They, ha they pay somebody to stand by the door for when you come in to welcome you. I'm going to repeat. They pay somebody mm -hmm. to stand by the door. And when you come in, their job is to greet you. Now, you really believe the company would spend that type of money just to have you at the door to greet the person when they come in if it, they didn't know it affects the person, the way they feel. You make the person feel happy. That person could be having a rough day. You know, I done got accused of, <laughs> I really shouldn't even be saying this, but I'll say it. I done got accused of uh, I'm able to sell ice to penguins and Eskimos. Um, yeah. I'm able, you know, I'm able to sell a cat back its own fur. Like this is some of the things. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time I heard that one, I was like, "Damn!" Like, that's how you think of me? You know, sand, sand to camels and um, Arabs. This is the stuff that people say about me. And, you know, you could take it as a diss or you could take it as a compliment. But you have to learn how to greet people. You have to learn how to ask people if they need help. And it's so shocking to the consumer when they come in the shop and I hit them with that. Some of them be giving me a look like, <laughs> like they're scared because they're not accustomed Yo, I'll be damned if I walk into a Macy's and I'm going around looking, 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 and you don't ask me if I need help, and you're supposed to be a big establishment. Instead, you following me around? No, 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 no. And I'm spending my money? No. Now I'm going to approach you. You don't see me here? I need help. Yes, I literally came off like that a few times. I see you watching me. Are you going to help me? Or are you going to ask me if I need help? And you should see how their reaction changed. They're like, uh, 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 uh. You understand? Like they get confused. They don't know what to do. So that's just one of the aspects. I hope I've been informative to help you on this, you know? Absolutely. Um, and then the last thing I, you were you were talking about, and that was really interesting, is um, it brought to my attention. I have a, a mentor, and um, keep talking. I'm listening to you. Okay, I have a mentor, and he he's went uh, public like six times in the early '90s, which was really hard to do in the whole internet um, concept back in the day when it just started coming out. So, anywho. He talks about uh, branding and he states that branding is um, not just your logo, it's not just the words that you use, it's not the font and type. Branding is an experience. And so when someone comes through the door, a part of your brand is what kind of customer service you're giving, what kind of experience are they having? He has a tea shop. So, you know, um, is he going to be knowledgeable about the tea? Like they have 50 or 60 things on the board of, teas and I'll they're so knowledgeable I just come in and I'm like I have a headache and I and I want to take the heat out of my liver so he'll recommend certain teas but it's all the feel that I get and it's consistent 
So I, I understand what you're saying when when your pet peeve is is not to, you know, be able to um, get customer service when you need it. You there? Yeah, that's that's very important. Like I said, people don't realize and know these things or they do realize and they do know it and they just don't care. They want to be rude. They want to be disrespectful. Some of them is not their business. So they really don't care. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's where you got to report them. Report their ass. <laughs> All right? Let Because I guarantee you once their boss finds out, hey, this person is not making my customers happy, what the hell I need them in my shop for? They're driving the customers away instead of bringing them. So that's one of the main important part. You have to extend yourself to people and want to be helpful, want to provide the service. You want, like, yeah, let me tell you something. I think I went in North Carolina. I was going <laughs> to my sister in South Carolina, okay? The plane stop in North Carolina, nice airport they have. Mm -hmm. There's a black man that started uh, the reason we have an experience in the airport and the shopping and the, all that. He He's a, a multimillionaire black guy, but okay, we'll go on. See, I didn't even know that. Cause it was like, I was like, damn, this is like a shopping mall up in here. Yeah, he wanted an airport. He said, why are airports so dull? So he started that in the early uh, 80s. I think late 70s, early 80s. Listen, I felt so comfortable, so joyous. I was like, wow. The joy was overwhelming that I felt. And it was, it was a warm feeling. I was like, damn, this is the airport? But that wasn't the kicker. I went to the bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know I'm from New York. Yeah. You know, born and raised in New York. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm I'm from California, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> when I went in that bathroom, it had a guy there greeting me. What? You should have took he, a picture with him. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. This is what <laughs> I jumped. I ain't even gonna lie. He was like, How you doing? So he was just standing on the side. And I was like, oh, Okay, you just came from your flight. So, yes, 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 yes. Went, used the bathroom, handing me my napkin. You know, would you like some mouthwash? Because, you know, if you were sleeping on, on pain, you know, you get that um, sleeper's breath, the morning breath, or whatever people <laughs> would call it. Yeah, the dude was so nice and pleasant. I was like, gosh, damn, I reached in my pocket and I had to give him a tip. Because, first of all, I ain't ever experienced that, not going to no bathroom. Like, this dude, <laughs> he wanted to make sure everything. And I know it works because I've seen other people put money in his tip job as well. Right. You know, so this is just techniques that we need to get back to these are the fundamentals that i find we as a people let me stick with just us now as black business owners people dealing with black business and want to get into quote unquote black business we need to start being humble and dealing with the other person's feelings I want to. I want you to know. Okay, yeah, you had a rough day, but when you start doing business with me, or you come up in this shop, I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to know, hey, I like going here because I'm gonna get good treatment. And a lot of times, a lot of people won't just do that because they feel that way. A lot of times, you help plant the seed to make it subconscious in a memory bank where they just automatically going to do it. They're going to come there. They're going to spend that money. You just have to know how to treat people. Bottom line. And that, and I'm going to close on that end because I know, what is it, one in the morning your way? <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> That's because we talked about something we enjoy. Um, yeah, it's, it's imperative 
in business that you understand how to treat people. You know, the, most people, some people are Bible readers, some people aren't, regardless of your religion, that golden rule of treating people how you'd like to be treated is essential because some people treat people and the, the way that they treat them is deplorable, you know? And so that flows into business. And, and they just can't enhance that or they just have to start doing some self-evaluation and self work it out so that they can maintain relationships because that's all business is. Um, I went to go here to speak and she's a female, but she said something, you know, that was imperative. She said, people will not. And that's the bottom line. I don't care what color you are. It, Your it, feed was what nationality. Hmm? Your feed was cutting out. Who did you he say? You, yeah, your feed is skipping. Who you said that um you went to hear speak? What'd you say, Joe? I said your feed was skipping. Who did you say you went to hear speak? Hello? Your internet connection dropped. I thought it was you. See, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. See? Soon as well, I, the devil is working through uh through your Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're giving good advice, you see what's going on now? Hello? I don't know. Yeah, you just coming in and out, Joel. All right, now you I might need to type your clothes. It's not me. <laughs> you there? But all right, I'm gonna let you close out. If you can hear me, you could close out. Hopefully, the people can hear you. Joel, biz, uh, Joel. Yeah, hopefully the people could hear you. I don't know yeah, what's going on. That was on. Joel Benjamin, and he was he stopped. Yeah, he stopped by to take time. You can hear me, and I can't hear you. Um, some technical difficulties, but we do so he can finish his thoughts. Okay, everyone, um, have a good evening. Joel, you still there? I can see you. Or maybe you gone. <laughs>